Did you know that the Kellogg's Corn Pops that they sell in the United States are different than the Kellogg's Corn Pops that they sell in Canada? What? So on this week, we watched Season 6, Episode 4, The Chinese Woman. <laughs> Are we starting with a correction? Yeah, two different, um, two different cereals, different, different both companies. Both, no, both made my catalogs. Okay, uh-huh. different shapes. So, uh, Canadian Cana- Sh- <laughs> Canadian Kellogg's Corn Pops are spherical, uh-huh. whereas the natural uh, way American <laughs> American Kellogg's Corn pa- <laughs> Corn Pops are shaped like corn kernels. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> like flatter and oblong. I, I want my cereal abstracted from what it is. I also think that uh, Canadian Kellogg's Corn Pops are sweeter. It's hard to so say. it's just corn? No, it's just less sweet. Ooh. It's the same crunchy Like cereal. puffed grain product. Yeah. But shaped like a corn kernel and not sweet. More more flat and oblong. Oh. Less sweet, not unsweetened. I think we need to try them both. Let's uh, hop in the car and go to Ogdensburg. We are going to Ogdensburg. When? Next week. Close talkers on the road. (laughs) Getting some corn pops. Guess so. Don't bring back any milk. We're going to bring over Kinder Surprises. We're going to bring back corn pops. I mean, you can understand how the United States banned... Kinder surprises. You wouldn't want a child it, choking on a incredibly toy. Incredibly dangerous for children. Like, could you imagine the deaths it would cause? Like, we don't want to. We, we don't want those on the streets. <laughs> and like, I don't. I don't care about the company's rights, and I don't care about your rights to enjoy a tasty treat, regardless of of what document those rights are enshrined in. <laughs> Kids' safety comes above all else. Mm-hmm. So The Chinese Woman was written by Peter Melman. It was directed by Andy Ackerman. It aired on October 13th, 1984. We've alienated all our American listener. Vulture.com ranked it as the 163rd best episode Mm -hmm. out of 169. Oh, no, I don't think that's fair. Screen Crush had it at a much more middling 104. Yeah, that feels right. Vulture.com said that it was, uh, in parentheses, possibly accidentally an exam of racial stereotypes. Hmm. Um, but the quote-unquote jokes just come off as dated nowadays. Yeah, they definitely do. Yeah. Um, whereas Screen Crush said that it was possibly Seinfeld's least incisive exam of racism. But uh, Kramer wearing, or Kramer switching to boxers and then going commando was... Quintessential K-Man. Do you want to talk about the, the, the jokes? Or should we do the guest stars? According to the schedule, we do the guest stars. When do we ever follow the schedule? All the time. Okay, That's why it's there. Who it's are there. they? Who are they? So not many new guest stars. We did have Jerry Stiller, Estelle Harris, and Kelly Cofield returning. Who's Kelly Cofield? Noreen. Oh, okay. We did have Angela Dorman playing the role of Donna Chang. Mm-hmm. She was in Nash Bridges, Material World, and a couple of episodes of The Drew Carey Show. Hmm. She was also a hologram on Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> cool. We also had William Ute, played by Doctor, who played Dr. Corval. Hmm. Uh, he was in Night Court, Days of Our Lives, and an episode of The Drew Carey Show. This is a, they never said his name on the show. Why is he uh, Dr. Corval? I need to know why they name these people and never use their names. It's in their rider. Mm. And? And? Another guest star. Who? I don't know what... what. Frank Costanza's lawyer. Oh, yeah, we had uh, an uncredited Larry David. I didn't include him, it's obvious. He's well, also I know been it's on- obvious, but his only his voice has been on before, except that one time where... He was in that mob that went to the apartment. Mm. What episode was that? Where like Larry Charles was there too? Yeah, it was when Kramer was in LA. 
Right. I think it's noteworthy that Larry David was in this episode. Sorry. Wearing a cape. A cape. So, I mean, wearing a cape, whatever. Wearing a cape with jeans <laughs> and a polo shirt. Yeah. Uh, questionable fashion there. If you're a fancy man wearing a suit and a cape. Yeah. I mean, that's style. Sure. You could be a, like a whole, have a whole goth vibe. Yeah. Yeah. But. Especially on a cool and breezy day. You know, October in New York. It's, uh, it's cool. Cape weather. Definitely. I had a cape when I was a child. Did you? Like a velvet cape. Mm. I, I feel like I could pull off a cape nowadays too. Mm-hmm. I feel like a woman could pull off a cape much more than a man. Probably. I'm going to get a cape. Well, where do you get a cape? It's one of the questions that they asked. Where do you get a cape? Internet. I feel like you'd get one at the bay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> where Where do you get fancy, outdated clothes? The bay? I don't know. Wouldn't it be like high fashion? You'd have to go to, I don't know, Nordstrom? Not Nordstrom Rack. You'd have to go to real Nordstrom. Holt probably sell you a $700 cape well you know i mean you pay for quality it doesn't even have sleeves <laughs> you, you, you know how you much could, money they're saving on on thread you could have armholes uh, it's not a cape then then what is it if it has armholes a, a poncho or a muumu no 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 a, no poncho goes all around yeah you still have an opening in the front but it's got armholes it's still a cape was the cape a real tv show yes okay <laughs> I thought it was just a joke in community. No. <laughs> I, it, it lasted, I think it was canceled during its first season. And yeah. it lasted like six or seven episodes. Okay. Was it about a cape or was it, is that a play on words? It was about a superhero detective guy that wore a cape. Oh, okay. Let's throw it back to last week when I asked you if you remembered this episode. It's about a woman who is not Chinese. Oh. So? I think I nailed it. I didn't want to reveal that Donna Chang was not a Chinese woman. I think you said that immediately after we recorded the episode. Oh. (laughs) I'll read the synopsis. Jerry dates a woman with a confusing last name who offers advice to Estelle. Kramer switches to boxer shorts. Frank's lawyer wears a cape. Elaine breaks up a relationship. Yeah. Bearing the lead here. And Kramer has a baby. <sighs> His boys can swim. So in the first stand up, uh, I was already sort of furrowing my brow, but Jerry goes, uh, the Chinese, the Chinese are really hanging in there with chopsticks. Mm-hmm. And then he talks about, you know, they're, they're farming with shovels. that look like spoons and pitchforks. One would assume. And the spoon was used in China from 2000 BC. Mm-hmm. More commonly than, cho- well, whenever chopsticks were invented, they weren't as common until 1000 AD. If you were to eat fried rice, yeah. would you use a fork, chopsticks, or a spoon? Spoon or chopsticks? Yeah. Probably go spoon. I mean, it's for shoveling, right? Yeah. So in, in Thailand, the utensils you get are a fork and a spoon, but it's the fork is used to like put food onto the spoon mm-hmm. and then you put the spoon in your mouth. Like the function of a knife that isn't yeah, cutting? Very, very, very similar. And it's like the putting a fork in your mouth is as odd as like putting a knife in your mouth. Like <laughs> you could do it, but uh, well, so eating like- Asian food, I'm much accustomed to fork and spoon and spoon goes in mouth. Spoon goes in mouth. The Asian spoon is is so much deeper and holds so much more, like soup or whatever. It's a far superior spoon. It's a little bit of a stereotype. What? You saying they got deep spoons? Those Asians, they got deep spoons. Don't twist my words. You know what I mean. That's exactly what you said. No twisting involved. How can it be a stereotype if you like it? Oh. <laughs> I actually think the line that Elaine said was, how can it be racist? Or what Jerry said was, how can it be racist if you like it? Yeah. Still still can. And then Kramer says it too. So Elaine is struggling with three bags plus her purse. Uh-huh. And they get to Jerry's apartment after they see Frank and his lawyer in the cape. 
And Jerry goes, oh, you can just put them there. Were those Jerry's groceries? Were they? I mean, Elaine's eating something from the groceries, but I mean, she could be eating Jerry's food. Everybody does. Mm. Why was she carrying all those bags? I don't know. I, I wrote down, were those Jerry's groceries? I wrote that too. So Noreen's got a new boyfriend. He's a long talker. While we were watching the episode, what I thought might have happened with the groceries was that they had gone to the store and bought groceries together because she's like switching things in and out of bags afterwards. Oh, was she? Yeah. Mm. Anyways. Yeah. A new guy. What's his name? Pat, John, Jim. Paul. Paul. Uh, Long talker. Can you imagine like people that drone on and on and on with stuff you really don't care about? No, I cannot imagine such a thing. Later on in my notes, I wrote, I miss landlines. Not for having to talk to people who aren't the people you're trying to call, but just the physical receiver is so much more comfortable to hold on to oh, than a cell phone. 100%, yeah. And I know they have those like things you can plug into a phone that's like a, a spiral a cord. Fake, fake receiver. A fake receiver. But I don't have a headphone jack anymore, so mm. I couldn't even get one of those. Mm. And speakerphone is terrible. I was mm-hmm. on the phone today, and I, like my ear got hot. Like it's just not nice. Old hard ears, Katie. <laughs> they call you. So Kramer comes in and he's adjusting his underpants, and Elaine asks him uh, something. <laughs> Elaine asks him what's going on, and my boys need a house. She goes, "I thought you were silk." It's like ah, I tried it for a while. I need the secure packaging of jockeys. Mm. Why was he? Why? Why was he uh, agitated with his existing underwear? I don't know. Wouldn't they have been jockeys? You'd figured. Maybe they uh, they chafed. Maybe they rode up a little. Mm. Cut into the leg. However, because he wears jockeys, is very concerned with his sperm count. Mm-hmm. And they suggest he goes down to a fertility clinic to get it checked. I mean, he's not even in a relationship. I have to in the middle of the day in a cup. <laughs> Because does this conflict with your regular schedule? <laughs> so I noticed some stuff on Jerry's fridge. There's more stuff on it this mm. episode. There's a, a poster called Crafts. Mm-hmm. There is a GW Motorworks poster sticker. Mm-hmm. A Felix the Cat cartoon. A hound dog looking magnet. Like a hound dog head. A Statue of Liberty magnet. Uh, like a rep movie theater poster. Mm-hmm. Um. And I wrote, Jerry's apartment is looking dingy. I feel like they either changed the lighting or something. Because mm. the apartment looks, like the walls look dirty. Oh. Did you notice? No. I noticed some stuff in Elaine's apartment when she was talking on the phone. Okay, sure. She has a feather poster. It's just like a huge poster with covered in feathers. Mm. And I looked it up. It's an Hermes ah. poster. And... A poster for gay pencils. Happiest pencils. Gay pencils, five cents. And it was really hard to look up this company because all I got in results was pride pencils. Mm -hmm. But um, they were a real company. And I wonder if they have that in her apartment because of Mr. Pitt's Oh, his stationary uh, thing? thing. Mm. She was sitting on the floor sharpening pencils. It's true, yeah. So Jerry's trying to call George, and the lines are crossed with Donna Chang. Jerry gets a date. He's very excited that it's his first uh, foray to the Pacific Rim. Ugh. And she suggests they go to Hunan Balcony. I feel like I feel like they could have. Well, maybe for the nineties. Anyways, I feel like they could have gone deeper on this and like explored the weird like fetish that white men have with Asian, and then like have Jerry get upset about. Flipping it on its head where she is such a China file mm. that it's like. But he, you you see his hypocrisy by pointing out her. Yeah. Affinity for Asian culture. Yes. Mm-hmm. She really does play up and want you to assume. It's Donna Chang. She says it's her last name all the time. All the time. She also teaches or does acupuncture. Mm-hmm. Which I guess hadn't entered the uh, white woman mainstream in the <laughs> 90s. <laughs> Not yet. And she suggests Hunan Balcony, which is a real restaurant. Oh, is it? Yeah. Looked pretty good. 
Is that a play on words like China Palace and then balcony? Sichuan foyer? <laughs> Wuhan basement. Ooh. <laughs> so Kramer's visited the doctor who mm-hmm. has prescribed boxer shorts. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kramer comes in with just a fistfuls of jockeys chasing Jerry around his apartment. Drops them on the floor, complains about the boxer shorts he's wearing, and Jerry just looks at the pile and says, well, I'm going to have to move now. <laughs> he keeps saying jockey shorts, too. Not like jockeys or jockey underwear. It's jockey shorts. What would you call those? Tidy whities mm. I would call them briefs. Uh, I guess boxers are briefs, eh, but but they're tidy whities Yeah, they're tidy whities Is jockeys a brand? Yeah. There's other, there's Fruit of the Loom. Yeah, okay. There's other tidy whities Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know if it was like a model, model? It was a... Maybe they have a patent. I don't know. Hmm. Patent pending? The patent pending jockey's undershorts. We give you a home for your boys. Did you notice Elaine was eating Raisin Bran? I did. We were just talking about Raisin Bran. California Raisin uh, Conglomerate Conspiracy. Did you look up to see if the word supercilious was an actual term? Oh, it is. Mm. I didn't have to look it up. Oh, apparently your vocabulary is larger than mine. <laughs> they couldn't just say hello mm. to hell with them. I knew it was Elaine. Why doesn't Frank like Elaine? Because she's supercilious. Apparently. I think this is just in this episode, kind of. No, there's a, no. He's, Some tension? She took his TV guide. Oh, yeah, maybe that's why. Mm. But he, he already didn't like her. Yeah. So in Jerry's apartment, George... Drink something called 10K. Oh, yeah, I saw that. It looked like an electrolyte uh, thing. Yeah, so it's called 10K Thirst Quencher. Mm. It was a competitor to, like, Gatorade and stuff. Um, and it's it, it was a brand owned by Suntory. Oh, wow. So I wonder if they, like, put that in as, like, like an Asian reference or something. Mm. It's the Asian Gatorade. It was. So why... Does George put his head in the oven when Donna Chang says his parents are going to get a divorce? Um, putting your head in the oven with gas on was a common way to commit suicide. I know why he did it, but why did he do it? <laughs> Finding out that his parents were divorcing, he found the situation uh, overwhelming. I know later he's like, I'm going to have to go to two places, mm. but... It just struck me as out of character. Yeah. Like, I would think that if George was George was finding out that his parents were divorcing, he would say, finally. Or, you know, something. Like, if there's a... The reaction was weird. To me. There was a line earlier in the series where he said... He's talking about uh, a couple breaking up, and he says, like, you know, of course, I'm the product of my parents staying together, so... Mm. And Jerry says if his parents had split up 30 years ago, he might have been normal. True. I'm still sure it's, it's a, regardless of the situation, it's a unpleasant thing. Of to course it through. is. But for George, I feel like, he, I don't think he's sad for them. Right? Oh, no, no, no. He's sad for himself. Like he's thinking about, <laughs> he's, he's thinking about two Thanksgivings. He's yeah. thinking about <laughs> visiting them both on the same day and it taking yeah. up, you know, his entire time. He's thinking about like them complaining about the other one to mm. him. But they do that anyway. <laughs> When when George is at lunch with his dad, he goes, so you were in uh, Manhattan the other day. What? My wife has to tell you everything? Mm-hmm. My every move? I don't trust men in capes. Superman wore a cape. Superman's the exception. I thought of that th- scene from The Incredibles where uh, the designer lady was, no capes. <laughs> <clears throat> Edna Mode. Jerry has double chess on his shelf. What's that? I looked it up. It's a 16 by 12 board, and you play with two sets. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't think that, I didn't know that was a real standard thing. It's anarchy chess. The only time we ever see him playing chess was when he was the penises. Uh, He was a penis and a brain, not two penises. Oh, right. Sorry. So Kramer comes in commando. Yeah. And he's uh, very mobile and uh, loose. And Elaine, like, crawls to the back of the couch to get away from him, and Jerry backs up. But then later, Elaine looks sort of intrigued. She's got, like, a... a you know, I'm just... I know it's not a visual medium. I'm doing it for you. 
Uh huh. I did, I didn't notice that. Mm. She was looking at his uh, thin layer of gabardine. <laughs> yeah. So Lane's met Noreen in the uh, coffee shop, and you know, kind of explains that she was the one that was hanging up. Mm-hmm. And Noreen keeps referring that Paul thought that she was having an affair. Mm-hmm. Like they're just dating, right? What's yeah. an affair? What What would you consider an affair? When you're married. Yeah. Okay. But you could also cheat on someone if you're dating. Sure, but you wouldn't call it an affair. No. No. Like. Paul kept Paul. Paul thought that somebody. Paul thought that I was cheating on him. Paul thought that I was having an affair. Like That's, those are two those different, are different things. things. Paul thought I was seeing somebody behind his back. That's a different thing than cheating on him. Yes, because they've only just started dating. They've been dating for a few weeks. Oh yeah, I, that was another note I took. So, if they haven't decided that and talked about being exclusive, mm. but then he finds out that she's seeing someone else, he might. He would maybe be offended mm-hmm. if he assumed that they were exclusive. And if she, if he's answering her phone, Kramer answers her phone, and he started dating her that day. That day he knocked her up. Well, she was maybe she was upset because mm-hmm. she was crying in that scene, or vis- visibly upset. So maybe he was like, "Do you want me to answer this for you?" So seeing someone I- else. Is like stage one. Cheating is like you've decided that you're exclusive. That's stage two. An affair is you're married. That's stage three. Mm. So the divorce is back on. You want a divorce? You got it! <laughs> my only complaint, well, one of my complaints of this episode was that there wasn't enough Frank and Estelle. And I feel like they came in at like 100 miles per hour. Mm-hmm. Like y- you need a little bit of like yeah acceleration. Mm-hmm. I noticed when they're back out on the the street set with the fruit stand mm. that there are ads for Coca-Cola and Modelo in the background, but they've been painted out. So mm. it says like Oka-Ola and Dello. They don't want to give free advertising to those. Uh... Sure, but it's, like, it's obviously a, a Coke ad. Why not just put something else? Mm. And Kramer leans out the window and screams, she's late. Mm-hmm. And then in the tag, she doesn't seem to be too happy about it. Yeah, that was dark. That was super dark. I mean, they did make a joke earlier about how if Elaine told her to go jump off the Brooklyn Bridge, yeah. she would do it. Well, Frank Costanza's lawyer saves her. I'm Frank Costanza's lawyer. <laughs> yeah, it was just a, uh, I don't know. I think I laughed more at Kramer in this episode than I, at anything else, or than I have recently. You you laughed, I think, twice at Kramer, I noted. Hmm. You're counting my Kramer laughs? I am. <laughs> I'm making a chart. <laughs> okay. All right, what's uh, next week's episode? Next episode is The Couch. Ah, uh, The Couch. What's it about? Uh, we have Poppy Returns. He's still sloppy? Poppy's, it does have to do with relieving yourself. In what way? We'll find out next week on Close Talkers. Bye. Don't we have to do corrections and omissions? There aren't any. Okay, bye-bye. Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?